Good morning. Welcome to another encouragement here at I'm Second Channel. My name is Brother. Because it doesn't matter who I am. The only one that matters, beloved, is Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth. The Son of Man, the Son of God. And he was and he is the Son of God. Yeshua HaMashiach. The Savior of the world. He loves you fiercely, beloved. Um, I was sitting here today, just kind of this morning, just for a few minutes, just soaking in his presence before I came on the camera. And really, I'd be trying not to get all messed up, you know. By the time I click the camera on, I'm already blubbering and, <laughs> you know, you know how I get sometimes, family. But I just love the Lord and I love his presence. And I just fall so short of his glory. And so I spend a lot of time weeping over my own sin, over my own faults, over my own shortcomings. And that's what you see. I don't turn off the camera just so... You know, you need to see me, uh, a man with faults and challenges, struggle before God and cry out to him. This is how we ought to be before the Lord, I believe, just real before him. Because I, I wake up every morning and I'm like, Father, I need you today. I love you and I need you today like every other day. And a few minutes ago, I was just thinking, just sitting here as I was reading the scripture I wanted to read to you this morning, I was thinking about the art of the return. There's an art to returning to God from our own way. And the thing is, that title just sounds fancy, but it's not an art at all. Just come back to the Father. Where have you been? Just come back to Him. Today we're going to be reading out of Luke chapter 15. A familiar story, a story I've read, wrote, uh, read out of before, and we just need to hear this again, I believe. It was just impressed on my heart even yesterday. Just check it out. Then we'll do a little prayer behind it, and we'll be done, okay? Luke chapter 15. And beginning in verse 11, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that falls to me. Daddy, give me my inheritance early. I know you've, you've made a way for me already. But I, I want it now. I want what's mine right now. So he divided the estate between them. He, he didn't even question it. He not only gave the, the younger son his inheritance right away, but he gave the older one his too. <laughs> Amen. A good father. Our father is a good father. 
A few days later, his youngest son gathered together everything that he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he wasted his fortune in reckless and immoral living. Sometimes the father, we be asking for things, we be asking for stuff, we be asking for these certain situations, we be asking for our inheritance and the, the father will give you what's yours. We're not always ready to handle it though. I want my inheritance when I've been properly groomed for it. Now, when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country and he began to do without and to be in need. So he went and forced himself on one of the citizens of that country. He drew near to somebody whom he had gotten to know a little bit from being there who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. Here's a, a, a child who's been in a royal family. His father is a king, he's a prince. His, his family are royalty. And he asks for his inheritance and he goes and squanders it to live foolishly. Well, when he does, now he's forced to live beneath his means. You may be a believer today, born again, but you've been living beneath your means. You've been squandering your inheritance. You've been, that means you've been squandering the grace that's given to you, the gift, your inheritance, out eating with the pigs doing things you shouldn't, living ways you shouldn't, away from your father. The art of return. He would have gladly eaten the carrot pods that the pigs were eating. He was so hungry, but they could not satisfy his hunger. When you're away, from the Father when you've turned away and when you're out doing your own thing, nothing else satisfies. And no one was giving anything to him. No one else cares about you out there in that world. Only your Father return to him. Sister, return to your daddy. Brother, go back home. Our father is waiting for you. And then when he finally came to his senses, <laughs> that's what we must do. We got to come to our senses. Sometimes we have to hit rock bottom. You know, they say that about addicts, you know, and that they won't change until they hit rock bottom, until they hit the lowest point of the low. Well, we don't even have to do that. Don't wait till you sink low, lower than you already have. The art of the return. When he finally came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have more than enough food while I am dying here of hunger? I will get up and go to my father. I will get up and go to my father, the art of the return. I will get up and go and return to my father. Return today. And I will say to him, Father, I, this is, this is the art of the return. This is how you do it. It's an art to it. I will get up and go to my father and I will say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. See, you can't just turn and go back. You got to go back and confess what you've done. Confess where you've been. You have to talk to your daddy and let him know you understand that you've done wrong.
the art of the return. Then you have to show humility. Look what he says next. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. He's humble. Just treat me like one of your hired men. Just take me back. Listen at that heart. See, you can't go back with a with an attitude like, well, I'm back anyway. You were wrong. I was wrong. This is the right attitude. I am no longer worthy because we are not worthy. So he got up and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, see, when you get your mind right, finally, this is the art of return. You'll find it as soon as you turn in his direction, he already knows. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and he was moved with compassion. Our father is full of favor and full of mercy and full of compassion. He will accept you back. And he ran and embraced him and kissed him. Do you know that, I've talked about this before, a king doesn't have to do anything that he doesn't want to do. He doesn't have to look foolish in front of his subjects. This father, this king, when he's seen his child, even beginning to turn back, he's in a long distance away and he sees him coming. This father was full of mercy, was full of compassion, probably weeping. I see my baby. Jumps up, looking foolish, runs, probably stumbling over himself. Royalty doesn't have to do that. But he's your father. The art of the return. He ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, I know he was in tears. I know it at this point. They've been away from each other for so long. Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quickly bring out the best robe for the guest of honor. He's now the most honored in the house. He, he didn't say, where's that money I gave you? Where's your inheritance? Notice he didn't blame him. The, 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 the devil, High Satan, Satan himself, the dragon, he is called the accuser of the brethren. The father doesn't accuse, he just says, tells the servants, what does he say? He says to him, give him a ring for his hand and sandals for his feet, bring the fattened calf and slaughter it, and let us invite everyone to feast and celebrate for this son of mine was as good as dead and is now alive again. He was lost and now he has been found. So they begin to celebrate. It's the art of the return. Come back to him, humble yourself. Humble yourself. Tell your daddy you're sorry. Now the older son was in the field and, and when he returned and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He summoned one of the servants and began asking what this celebration meant. And he said to him, your brother has come and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received them back safe and sound. Like, what good news? But the elder brother became angry and deeply, deeply resentful and was not willing to go in. See, sometimes you could be in the father's house already. Here's another point. And just be ungrateful. 
Maybe you haven't turned away. Maybe you don't need to return. Maybe you're sitting right there with your father every day, but you're ungrateful. You think you're worthy already. You think you're somebody in the kingdom. He said to his father, look, these many years I have served you. I have never neglected nor disobeyed your command, yet you have never given me so much as a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this other son of yours has arrived, not when, when my brother has got back home, See, even in the kingdom, we could be so hateful towards each other, so resentful. This son of yours, this is your family. We don't even treat each other like family. What? Whose kingdom are you living in? It says, but when this, this son of yours arrives, who has devoured your estate, his inheritance with immoral women's women. You slaughtered the fattened calf for him. You threw him a big old to-do, <laughs> a big old party. Notice what the son is doing also. He's also acting like high Satan, like Satan, like the devil. He's accusing him. He out here sleeping around with all these, telling his business. The son already came home confessing to the father. He's already forgiven. Now here's someone that supposedly a brother in, in, the, in the kingdom of the father, of the king. Who are you accusing? Who are you judging? The father said to him, son, <laughs> That's mercy right there because you run in your mouth. He's still calling you son. He's still calling you daughter, even though you've been accusing the family of God too, like the devil. We have no right to judge one another. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The father said to him, son, you are always with me. And all that is mine is yours. Listen to that. I love you, Father. But it was fitting to celebrate and rejoice for this brother of yours. He's not the son of yours. He's this brother of yours. This is what he reminds him. He was as good as dead and has begun to live again. He was lost and he has been found. And Father, this morning we think about the art of return. And we have been away in our hearts and in our minds. And some of us have physically went away and we've run out with our inheritance. We've taken our salvation and we've run back to the world and done many things, foolish things that we shouldn't and squandering our inheritance, your grace, your mercy. But today we return, we humble ourselves, and we confess that we are not worthy. We confess the things that we have done. We ask your forgiveness. We don't need you to throw a party, Lord, just to receive us back. And we'll be so very careful, so very careful to give you all the praise, to give you all the glory, to give you all the honor. For it is yours to begin with. And it is in the name of your son, Jesus, Yeshua Hamashiach, our King, our Savior, and our brother, that we do pray and we do say, Amen and amen. The art of the return. Come home, family. Your father's waiting. Your daddy's waiting. Amen. I'm second.